What do fine motion pictures like Edge of the City, HUD, Sounder, The Outrage, and Molly Maguire's? Well, the list could go on and on. What do they all have in common? Well, they're very good pictures. They're also directed by this gentleman, Martin Ritt. He is also an actor this time around. Now, your career as an actor, I'd love to talk about, because I know that with Actors Studio, for example, you work with actors quite a lot. Yeah, I taught there. Okay, Okay. Well, I'll use the same sort of thing. Start. Okay. What do wonderful motion pictures like The Molly Maguires, Edge of the City, HUD, Sounder, Cross Creek all have in common, besides being great films? Well, they were directed by Martin Ritt. This time around, Martin Ritt in The Slugger's Wife is an actor, a baseball manager. And I'm curious about your career as an actor. We think of you as a director primarily, but really, an actor, that's been with you all the way along, hasn't yes, it? Yes, I began as an actor. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, when I was a young man, the motion picture stars were all looked for in the image of Robert Taylor and Ty Parr. And one quick look in the mirror made clear to me that I was never going to be uh, that kind of a, an actor or that kind of a heartthrob. And I looked around for the next best job. And I f figured it, was, it had to be the director. He seemed to be the boss. I knew how tough it was going to be, but I hitched up my pants and went to it because I knew that's what I wanted. Now, the years of the actor's studio and the years of your television work, could you give me a sense of chronology there when well, all of that fell in place? The actor's studio, right after uh, World War II, when I came, came out of the Army, television was just beginning. And they were anxious to hire people like myself with the, the Broadway background I had as an actor and a beginning director. And I went to work for CBS in the days when there was one camera. You did a show with one camera. It was a studio above Grand Central Station, New York City. And even the commercials were live. Huh? Everything was live. And we never went any further west than the Ohio River. And there were not many commercials. It's the, when the commercials came in, the, in the, business, the whole medium began to suffer. Because I was able to do sake, Hemingway, Willa Cather, anybody I wanted to do on the American scene, any short story writers, I was doing half hour live television. And consequently, the shows were very interesting and sometimes first class. How many kinescopes survive that you are aware of of these shows? Well, none of them have any quality that I have ever seen. Uh, and, uh, but then the agencies became very strong. And then, of course, uh, my old friend McCarthy came onto the scene. and. Uh, <laughs> The combination of the two of them did away with uh, any genuine creative thing that was going on. A movie like A Boy is Ten Feet Tall or A Man is Ten Feet Tall or The Edge of the City really helps kind of show us the boundary line mm -hmm. in your career with TV and film. It's a film I've used in classrooms a lot of times. Is it one of your own favorites? I'd like to think it, it is. is. It is. <laughs> it is one of my own. First of all, it's my first film. And I knew so little about making a film that when I finished it, there was no film left. And the editor looked at me and he said, you're crazy. I said, well, you know, I, I, that's the way I shot live television. I made up my mind how I was going to cut before, you know, before anything. And I went from, and that's the way I shot the movie. I shot it in 28 days and for $400,000, and it never got out the first time around. And it was a very good little movie. Mm -hmm. And the presence of Sidney Poitier and the kind of character and the relationship with Cassavetes there, way ahead of your time. Yep, that's true. It was both, I knew they were both very good. Sidney was probably the most ing ingratiating actor that I'd ever worked with. He was so attractive to an audience. And John, I could see right away, was very gifted. Very strange, very difficult to say, <laughs> but very gifted. And uh, certainly uh, the subsequent history proved, you know, that both those estimations were true. The commitments represented in Edge of the City and as recently as Cross Creek have long marked you as a director of special toughness and special integrity, and I would dare say you've suffered for that sometimes. Yeah, uh, but the suffer has been much outweighed by the fact that I was able to express myself, which is the reason I got into this business. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, nobody promised you it would be easy. Nobody promised me. No. Well, if you'd offered me a contract, a lifetime contract, 20 years ago. 
for $10,000 a year. I know Ray Stark standing back then, grinning. I would have signed. I would have made any pact with the devil at that <laughs> point because uh, I was concerned with making a living. I never expected to make big money in this business, particularly with holding many unpopular views. But uh, everything has worked out fine. I've been able to express myself, make the kind of films I want, and uh, I'm pleased with that, very pleased with that. Some marvelous moments in Slugger's Wife where you're exchanging philosophies about, well, I may not be a very nice man sometimes, but I know how to win. I'm mm -hmm. paraphrasing very roughly. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of experience that comes out in those words. Yes. Maybe only you could have delivered them quite that way. Well, I've been around, uh, I've been involved <laughs> not in quite the same struggle that Burley DeVito is, but uh, it's, not, it's not really outside of my canon, outside of my experience. The kind of pictures I've wanted to make, I've had that kind of struggle all the time. The difference between a manager and a movie director is that a movie director should really be kin to a Renaissance man. Even though some of the externals of movie directing and managing a baseball team seem similar, the difference is in that. You don't have to be a Renaissance man to manage a baseball team. You just have to be a, you have to be a winner and very shrewd. But it's a profession that emerges remarkably similar to that of John Voight and Conrad. Mm -hmm. Because you have to be a field marshal and you have to be sensitive, you have to be a psychologist. I think Conrad should be shown to every teacher who it's, ever considers it's, it's a It's a great teacher's picture, no question about <laughs> it. I was, I really, that's another one of those pictures that didn't quite make it at the box office that I really loved. Cross Creek, did it break your heart? Yes. Or did it no, it didn't break my heart. My heart by now is too hardened. It hurt me. The picture that hurt me the most that failed was the Molly Maguire's. Because hmm. I thought it was going to, I just thought it was going to be a very big film, and it didn't turn out that way. And now it's, it's kind of a cult film, and it plays in museums and such. And, and you worked with one of your favorite cinematographers. Yeah, yeah. terrific. Terrific intuitive artist, Jimmy Wong Hao. Great, great artist. Well, Martin Ritt, whether you are an actor or a director, I want to tell you what an honor it is to meet you. And more power to you. Let's hope for a lot more movies to come. I you hope are so. Still I'm still functioning. Very good. Okay. Martin Ritt, he's also an actor this time around in The Slugger's Wife and from Atlanta for KCTV5. This is John Tibbetts.